Hey guys, Steve here at Potent Ponics. Um, today we're going to go over uh, as far as top feeding and stuff like that. So here we got a 55 gallon drum. I got a, a two different pumps in there that swirl the water around. We have two air stones in there, get a nice foam across the top. I thought today we'd cover a little over kind of the beginner's guide to compost teas. So what we want to do is you want to get yourself a big good, you know, five gallon or 55 gallon drum depending on the size you're looking to do. Um, you could also do an IBC tote. You know, over here we got some fish and stuff like that. So actually what we do is we take the water off our fish system, we plumb it over here, goes up the pump over to here, and then flushes into here. And then this is our, our fill tank for a top feeding. Um, then we top off the water, this way I can take a little bit of water out of my fish tank regularly. Then the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a microbial mix. Now this is just a Supreme Growers one, but any of your fungal ones or microbials uh, are great. Recharge is another really good one. Um, you know, Great White, uh, any of the other ones out there. Uh, my, uh, Mammoth P is another good one, but the ones I like to use are um, uh, the Recharge and Mammoth P are my favorite two to use. I'm just kind of using up some of the free sample crap we got laying around here at the moment. Um, and then I like to use a Myco, uh, Myco mix. Um, this is, a, again, a Supreme Growers one, but any of your Myco mixes. Now, if you're using Recharge or something like that, you don't need to because it's a blend of both. Um, just try to not overshoot your trichoderma more than 2 to 2.2% of your total microbe volume, or they tend to take over. And then add a kelp, you know, a kelp blend, um, just to help feed a little potassium and it has some other micro minerals to your, um, to your brew. So um, you want to add your microbes, your kelp, and your, my, your, uh, and your mycelium, uh, your mycos your micros and your micos. And then the other thing you want to add a little bit of is a little bit of bricks booster or molasses. Now this is unsulfured molasses. Now I always, regardless of what brew I'm doing, I always, always, always do those. So a molasses, a microbe, and a myco, and a little bit of kelp. Okay, that's the base of anything I'm doing. Now if I'm doing a bloom booster, I might add a PK booster, like something like this, or you know another appropriate PK booster that is appropriate for phosphorus and potassium and fish safe or I might add iron I might add cow mag um, you know whatever I need to amend but it, it kind of gives you an idea of how you'd go about doing it and then what I do is I take this I have a valve here that runs to a hose I'll run this hose down to a five gallon bucket and then we top feed um, on the bigger grows that I work on we actually have that automated to where this I just hit a switch and it waters everything automatically um, but that's we don't have that all set up here yet so um, you know, I'll, I'll show you guys that in a different different setup, not this particular farm, but um, just to show you how they're doing it on a, on a scale where they're doing about 120 plants per room, up to 120 plants per room. Um, you know, it takes about, I don't know, maybe 20 gallons of this stuff to do a room that size to top feed approximately plus minus, um, just to give you an idea. Alrighty, if you guys have any other questions, um, let me know. Um, we always pH adjusted. I got a little phosphoric acid. We use that for pH down as phosphorus. Um, we use uh, dolomite or potassium silicate for pH up. Make sure you pH adjust your booster. Now you can see up here we have a uh, total PPM, our uh, temperature and our pH. You never want your pH to be more than 0.6 different. So we'll use as an example. See this is at 7.1 right now. I'm gonna go over here and this is at 7.4. Okay, that's too much or that's close enough. Um, uh, uh, to where they're, that, that would be okay to use. Ideally, I want my fish tank water to be about 6.8. Um, I just top water this uh, to fill the sump back up when I filled up the, the tea maker. Um, but that's the only reason why it's a little bit high. Another 24 hours, it'll be back down to where it should be. Um, but basically, you want the, your pH of your top feed to be no more than 0 0.6 or 0 0.7 from the pH of your fish tank because if your root zone, in the top half of the root zone is an enormous difference in pH, it'll cause all kinds of headaches and problems and you don't want that. It can stress the plant out and slow the growth and stunt the plant. So you wanna try and prevent that by doing that. Alrighty, thanks for watching. Um, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you enjoy the knowledgeable videos on this channel and as well as the podcast and check out Marty over at AP Meds. And thanks for watching.